It is quite impossible to fulfill the unattainable and ever-changing beauty standards of our world, as many have already spent far too much attempting to catch up. The fact that this is an ever-present issue might not come as a shock, given how difficult it is to envision certain historical conceptions of beauty as enjoyable or exquisite. In this video, we'll examine some of the strange historical fashion decisions made by people, ranging from the medieval to the Victorian eras. Here are top 10 unusual beauty trends from history. Number 10. Teeth Blackening You would assume that the teeth were meant to be white, but unfortunately, some ancient Japanese did not, hence the need for teeth blackening. Teeth blackening, also known as ohaguro in Japan, has a long history rooted in cultural traditions and beauty standards. This practice dates back centuries, with its origins believed to trace back to ancient Japan, China, and Southeast Asia. Teeth blackening was primarily associated with the nobility, which is a symbol of beauty, social status, and cultural identity. Historically, the process of teeth blackening involved applying a solution made from iron filings and vinegar to the teeth, resulting in a deep black coloration. This custom was often practiced during puberty or marriage ceremonies, marking significant life transitions and symbolizing maturity, fertility, and marital status. For many, blackened teeth were considered a sign of elegance, refinement, and adherence to traditional values. One of the primary reasons why teeth blackening was considered beautiful in traditional Japanese society was its association with purity and modesty. In contrast to white teeth, which were associated with youth and immaturity, blackened teeth were viewed as a sign of maturity, wisdom, and adherence to cultural norms. Additionally, blackened teeth were believed to enhance facial features, particularly when contrasted against the pale complexion prized in Japanese beauty standards. Furthermore, teeth blackening served as a means of distinguishing social classes with the aristocracy and upper classes. Despite its historical and cultural significance, the practice of teeth blackening gradually declined over time, particularly with the influence of westernization and modernization in Japan. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, as Japan opened up to the West and adopted Western customs and aesthetics, teeth blackening fell out of favor among the urban elite. Today, teeth blackening is largely confined to rural and remote areas of Japan, where traditional customs and rituals continue to be preserved. In recent years, there has been a resurgence of interest in traditional Japanese culture and aesthetics, leading to a renewed appreciation for practices such as teeth blackening among some individuals. However, the practice remains a niche phenomenon and is more commonly viewed as a cultural curiosity rather than a widespread beauty trend. Number 9. Foot Binding Foot binding, a practice originating in China during the 10th century, is one of the examples of beauty standards despite the physical pain it has on women. This practice involved tightly binding the feet of young girls to prevent natural growth, resulting in what was known as lotus feet, or golden lotus. The process typically began when girls were between four and nine years old, with their feet tightly bound in cloth strips to force the toes to curl under the sole, creating a tiny pointed shape. The origins of foot binding are complex, with various theories suggesting it began as a way to emulate a concubine of an emperor who danced gracefully on her golden lotus feet, or to signify status and wealth, as women with bound feet were often seen as more desirable marriage prospects. Despite the excruciating pain and long-term health consequences, foot binding persisted for over a thousand years. Mothers and grandmothers often facilitated the practice, believing it was essential for their daughters and social acceptance. Foot binding was also associated with notions of beauty, femininity, and refinement, with bound feet considered a mark of elegance and sophistication. The process of foot binding was not only physically painful, but also psychologically damaging, as girls endured intense pressure from family members and societal expectations to conform to beauty standards. Many suffered from infections, deformities, and lifelong disabilities as a result of foot binding, with some unable to walk without assistance or experiencing chronic pain throughout their lives. The practice of foot binding began to decline in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, due in part to efforts by Chinese reformers, missionaries, and social activists who campaigned against it. The establishment of the Republic of China in 1912 led to the banning of foot binding, and subsequent cultural and societal changes further contributed to its demise. Number 8. Elongated Neck Rings Neck rings, 
also known as neck coils or neck elongation, have a long history spanning various cultures, including those in Southeast Asia and Africa. Neck rings have been in use for thousands of years. Anthropologists have definitively traced the practice back to the 11th century, but the truth is that it seems to go even further back than that. This practice involves wearing coils of metals like brass and gold alloys, wood, or other materials around the neck, gradually elongating the neck over time. The tradition of neck elongation is particularly prominent among certain ethnic groups, such as the Kayan people of Myanmar and Thailand, as well as the Ndebele and Maasai tribes of Africa. Neck rings are an interesting fashion choice. Many cultures have a different standard of beauty, and while we can't quite identify why somebody would make the choice to wear neck rings, we certainly respect their choice to do so. In most societies, elongated necks are associated with grace, elegance, and status, with women wearing neck rings as a symbol of beauty and femininity. The practice is often linked to cultural identity, marital customs, and social hierarchies, with women adorned with neck rings considered more desirable marriage partners. The process of neck elongation typically begins in childhood, with young girls starting to wear neck rings as early as five years old. As they grow older, additional rings are added to gradually lengthen the neck. Contrary to popular belief, neck rings do not actually elongate the bones of the neck, but rather compress the collarbone and ribs, creating the illusion of a longer neck. Over time, the neck muscles weaken, and the weight of the rings can cause the shoulders to droop, giving the appearance of a stretched neck. Physical discomfort is also associated with wearing neck rings. In recent years, neck elongation has garnered interest beyond its traditional cultural context and has made its way into the world of fashion and aesthetics. Designers and artists have incorporated elements of neck elongation into their work, drawing inspiration from the elongated silhouettes and graceful lines associated with this practice. Runway shows, editorials, and fashion campaigns have featured models adorned with neck rings or wearing garments that evoke the aesthetic of elongated necks. I guess we can say that neck elongation is still a thing in the modern world of beauty and fashion. Here is today's subscriber's pick. Looking closely at this picture, it might just remind us of Queen Elizabeth I of England, who is often rumored to have suffered from dental issues, including rotten teeth. While there is some historical evidence to support these claims, the extent of her dental problems remains a subject of debate among historians. During Queen Elizabeth's reign, dental hygiene was rudimentary, and access to dental care was limited. As a result, dental issues were common among people of all social classes, including royalty. Historical records suggest that Queen Elizabeth experienced toothaches and gum disease, which may have been exacerbated by her diet and lifestyle. This is because Queen Elizabeth had a sweet tooth and enjoyed sugary foods and drinks, which could have contributed to her dental problems. However, it's essential to approach historical accounts with skepticism, as rumors and gossip were prevalent during her time. Some historians argue that stories of her rotten teeth may have been exaggerated or fabricated to tarnish her reputation. Political adversaries and foreign powers often spread rumors to undermine her authority and legitimacy as queen. Despite the uncertainty surrounding Queen Elizabeth's dental health, there is evidence to suggest that she took steps to address her dental issues. Records indicate that she consulted physicians and dentists for treatment, and she may have had teeth extracted or treated to alleviate pain and discomfort. But since everything the rich do is considered a beauty trend, can we also say that having rotten teeth is or was a beauty trend? Dear viewers, we would like to know your thoughts on this. Share your insights with us in the comments below. Number 7. Pale Skin during the Victorian era, achieving a pale complexion was highly coveted and considered a sign of beauty and refinement. Many women believed extreme pale skin made them more beautiful. To attain this ideal, women turned to various methods, which included the use of arsenic complexion wafers, also known as FARD, containing arsenic compounds, and other lead-based cosmetics ingested by women in the hopes of whitening their skin. Some arsenic and lead-based cosmetics were also applied topically to the skin in various forms, including powders, ointments, and creams. These products were aimed at whitening the complexion and creating a luminous appearance. Women of high social standing utilized these cosmetics to achieve a desired paleness by applying them to the face, resulting in a lighter complexion, which was perceived as a sign of wealth, refinement, and youthfulness. Arsenic and lead-based cosmetics pose severe health risks. Lead, a toxic heavy metal, can be absorbed through the skin and lead to a range of adverse effects, including neurological damage, kidney failure, and even death. They also posed significant health risks and consequences, like skin damage, cancer risk, 
systemic poisoning, and so on. However, the detrimental effects of lead and arsenic poisoning were probably not fully understood at the time, and the pursuit of beauty often outweighed concerns about potential health hazards. In societies where fair skin was associated with beauty, wealth, and social status, individuals were willing to endure the potential consequences of using toxic cosmetics in the hopes of achieving the desired aesthetic. As scientific understanding of the health risks associated with arsenic and lead compounds grew, regulations and restrictions on their use in cosmetics were implemented. In modern times, the use of arsenic and lead compounds in cosmetics has been largely banned or heavily regulated in many countries. Manufacturers are required to adhere to strict safety standards and avoid the use of toxic ingredients in cosmetic products. Number six, veins painting. Painting veins, or creating the appearance of veins on the body using body paint or pigments, was indeed an ancient beauty trend that dates back to various civilizations throughout history. In ancient Egypt, Body painting was a common practice among both men and women, often associated with religious rituals, ceremonial events, and everyday adornment. The ancient Egyptians believed that the human body can be used for artistic expression, as body painting served as a means of honoring the gods, warding off evil spirits. In ancient Greece, body painting was also a common practice, particularly during religious festivals, athletic competitions, and theatrical performances. The ancient Greeks believed that painting veins on the body could enhance physical strength, agility, and endurance, making it a popular practice among athletes and warriors. During the Renaissance period in Europe, body painting experienced a revival, with painted veins becoming a popular fashion trend among the nobles. Renaissance-era body painters used a combination of natural pigments, such as crushed gemstones, minerals, and plant extracts, to create intricate designs and patterns on the skin. Painted veins were often incorporated into elaborate costumes and theatrical performances. In the Victorian era, Vein painting was a common beauty trend among women. Using cosmetics, such as blue or green-tinted creams, women would paint delicate vein-like lines onto their skin to create the appearance of translucent and pastier than a white wall with porcelain-like complexions. This practice aimed to emulate the aristocratic ideal of delicate, ethereal beauty. Vein painting was especially popular among women of higher social classes, who sought to achieve an otherworldly appearance reminiscent of classical statues and romanticized notions of femininity. In modern times, the practice of painting veins on the body has evolved into a form of artistic expression and body modification. Body painters and tattoo artists often incorporate vein-like patterns into their designs, creating visually stunning compositions that blur the lines between art and anatomy. These intricate body paintings may be showcased in exhibitions, fashion shows, or performance art events, where they captivate audiences with their creativity and craftsmanship. Furthermore, the rise of alternative beauty trends and subcultures has brought renewed interest in vein painting as a form of self-expression and body adornment. In the world of cosplay, for example, enthusiasts may use body paint to recreate the appearance of fictional characters, including intricate details such as veins and muscle definition. Similarly, in the realm of avant-garde fashion and editorial photography, vein painting may be employed to create striking visual effects and challenge conventional notions of beauty. Number 5. Long Skulls The practice of elongating skulls, also known as cranial deformation or artificial cranial modification, has a long history spanning various ancient civilizations across the globe, from the Mayans of Mesoamerica to the Huns of Eurasia and Mangbetu tribe in Africa, and many more elongated skulls were seen as a symbol of beauty, status, and cultural identity. In many ancient societies, the elongated skull was seen as a mark of distinction, reserved for the elite or nobility, and often served as a visible indicator of one's social status. Additionally, elongated skulls were associated with divine or supernatural beings. The process of elongating skulls typically began in infancy or early childhood when the skull is still pliable. Various methods were employed to achieve the desired shape, including binding the infant's head with tight bandages, using wooden boards or cradle-like devices to apply pressure, or manually shaping the skull through massage and manipulation. Over time, the skull would gradually take on the desired elongated form, 
often resulting in a distinctive and striking appearance. The motivations behind cranial deformation were multifaceted, with cultural, religious, and aesthetic factors influencing the practice. In some societies, elongated skulls were believed to bestow special powers or abilities upon the individual, such as enhanced intelligence, spiritual insight, or connection to the divine. Others viewed cranial deformation as a form of self-expression or cultural identity, reinforcing group cohesion and solidarity within the community, while for many others, an elongated skull made a person more attractive, therefore considered aesthetically pleasing and desirable. Despite its association with beauty and status, cranial deformation was also not without its risks and complications. The process of elongating skulls could be painful and potentially dangerous, particularly for infants and young children whose skulls were still developing. Additionally, cranial deformation could lead to a range of health problems, including headaches, neck pain, and increased susceptibility to infection or injury. Over time, the practice of elongating skulls gradually declined as societal norms shifted and cultural traditions evolved. In the 21st century, the practice of elongating skulls is not commonly practiced as a beauty trend. It is largely regarded as an ancient cultural practice and is not considered mainstream or socially acceptable in most societies. While some groups may still engage in cranial modification for cultural or traditional reasons, it is not pursued for aesthetic purposes. Instead, beauty ideals have evolved to focus on natural features and diversity rather than extreme body modification. Overall, elongating skulls is no longer seen as a contemporary beauty trend in the 21st century. Number 4. Lips Plate one would consider a plate on a lip bizarre or weird, but it is not so for the Mercy tribe of Ethiopia, as they are renowned for their distinctive cultural practices, one of the most striking being the use of lip plates or lip discs. Among the Mercy people, particularly women, the insertion of increasingly large lip plates is a revered tradition that has existed for centuries. Girls from the age of 15 go through bonsai, the transition from girlhood to womanhood. The Mercy mark this occasion with a unique ritual. The girls receive a debia tugoin, a lip plate. A female relative makes an incision on the lower lip, which is then stretched by placing a peg or plug inside. The cut requires a couple of weeks to heal before they add longer sticks. When stretched enough, they insert a lip plate made of wood or clay. These plates can measure up to 12 centimeters. Sometimes it is necessary to extract a few teeth to accommodate the plate. After this grueling process, the girl is ready for marriage. The decision to wear a lip plate is a deeply personal and voluntary choice for Mercy women, often influenced by cultural traditions, familial expectations, and individual preferences. While the practice is not mandatory, many Mercy women choose to wear lip plates as a means of expressing their cultural identity and adherence to traditional beauty standards. The Mercy consider the lip plate a symbol of beauty, fertility, strength, and steadfastness. Girls paint the plates in colorful designs. They can remove the plates, but must wear them for special occasions and when they serve men food. They stop wearing the plates if they are in mourning. However, the practice of wearing lip plates has also sparked debates about cultural authenticity, bodily autonomy, and the ethics of cultural tourism. Critics argue that the imposition of Western beauty standards and the commodification of indigenous cultures can undermine the integrity and autonomy of traditional practices like lip stretching. Although in the 21st century, lip plating is not widely practiced or considered a beauty trend, in mainstream society, beauty ideals have shifted towards more natural aesthetics, and lip plating is generally not seen as a contemporary beauty practice. Number 3. Tiny Teeth it is true that having short teeth was regarded as a standard of beauty in some societies and historical eras. For instance, in Europe during the Renaissance, having small teeth was frequently regarded as a sign of sophistication and elegance. A revitalized interest in aesthetics and human anatomy, along with a resurgence of classical art, literature and culture, were the hallmarks of the Renaissance. People with short, even teeth were frequently shown in portraits and other works of art from this era, which reflected the idealized beauty standards of the time. Because they are associated with youth and energy, small teeth may have been deemed attractive throughout the Renaissance and other historical times, since teeth usually erupt in early adulthood and stay mostly unaltered throughout life, shorter teeth are frequently linked to a younger appearance. On the other hand, longer teeth could be viewed as an indication of wear or aging, which could make someone appear less appealing. Furthermore, having short teeth was occasionally seen as a sign of luxury and socioeconomic standing. 
Shorter teeth would have been seen as a symbol of luxury and wealth in societies where access to dental care was scarce or non-existent because they indicated a person had access to a healthy diet, good hygiene, and medical attention. Because of this, people with small teeth would have been thought of as more attractive potential spouses or respected members of the community. The perception of short teeth as beautiful or desirable, in some societies, symmetry and proportion are valued in facial features, and short teeth may contribute to a harmonious and balanced appearance. However, it's essential to recognize that beauty standards are subjective and can vary widely across different cultures and historical periods. While short teeth may have been considered attractive in certain contexts, beauty ideals are fluid and subject to change over time. Today, advancements in dentistry and cosmetic dentistry allow individuals to modify the appearance of their teeth to align with contemporary beauty standards. Number 2. Long fingernails. Long fingernails have been regarded as a symbol of beauty and status in various cultures throughout history, with their significance rooted in cultural, social, and even practical considerations. In ancient China, well-groomed long fingernails, which sometimes were up to 8 to 10 centimeters long, were great symbols of beauty and wealth, and leisure as they indicated that an individual did not engage in manual labor. Additionally, long nails were seen as a sign of refinement and elegance, with intricate nail art and adornments further enhancing their aesthetic appeal. Both men and women from the upper classes, especially literati, had to keep their long fingernails under gold cases. Beyond fashion, long fingernails also held symbolic significance in certain cultural and religious contexts. In ancient China, for example, long nails were regarded as a reflection of one's connection to the natural world, with the length of the nails representing harmony and balance within the body. In Hindu culture, long nails were associated with vitality and strength, with nails being considered an essential element of the body's energy channels. However, the practice of maintaining long fingernails has evolved over time, with contemporary beauty standards often favoring shorter, more practical nail lengths. In the 21st century, Long nails are still admired for their beauty and versatility, but they are no longer seen as a necessity or status symbol as they once were. Instead, nail care trends have shifted towards promoting healthy, well-groomed nails that are suited to modern lifestyles. Shorter, neatly manicured nails are preferred for their functionality and ease of maintenance, with nail art and embellishments remaining popular for those seeking to express their individuality and creativity. Despite this shift in beauty trends, long nails continue to hold a place in fashion and self-expression. Many individuals still choose to grow their nails long and adorn them with intricate designs and decorations, while others opt for artificial nail extensions to achieve the desired length and aesthetic. Additionally, long nails are often featured in fashion editorials, runway shows, and celebrity red carpet appearances, further cementing their status as a timeless symbol of beauty and style. Number 1 strange corsets. The corset, a garment designed to shape and support the torso, has a long and storied history in fashion and beauty. Dating back to ancient civilizations, corsets have been worn by women across various cultures as a means of achieving an idealized silhouette and conforming to prevailing beauty standards. The origins of the corset can be traced back to ancient Greece, where women wore a garment known as a strophium to support and shape the breasts. These early forms of corsets were simple bands or strips of fabric wrapped around the torso, providing minimal support and compression. However, it was during the Renaissance era in Europe that the corset evolved into a more structured and elaborate garment. In the 16th century, the corset became an essential component of women's fashion, worn to accentuate the waistline and create a desired hourglass figure. Made from stiffened fabrics such as linen, whalebone, or steel, these corsets were tightly laced to cinch the waist and lift the bust, giving the wearer a more defined and exaggerated silhouette. Throughout the following centuries, the popularity of the corset continued to rise, reaching its peak during the Victorian era in the 19th century. During this time, corsets were intricately embellished and embellished with lace, ribbons, and embroidery, reflecting the opulence and extravagance of the period. Corsets were considered essential undergarments for women of all social classes, with the idealized hourglass figure promoted as the epitome of feminine beauty. However, the pursuit of a tiny waist often came at a cost, as corsets were notorious for their discomfort and restrictive nature. Tight lacing, the practice of cinching the waist to extreme proportions, could lead to a range of health issues, including difficulty breathing, digestive problems, and even deformities of the ribs and internal organs. Despite these risks, 
many women endured the discomfort of corsetry in the name of beauty and social acceptance. In addition to shaping the body, corsets also played a role in social status and cultural identity. In Victorian society, a woman's ability to wear a corset was seen as a sign of refinement, discipline, and moral virtue. The idealized hourglass figure represented not only beauty, but also femininity, elegance, and social standing. As the 20th century progressed, attitudes towards the corset began to shift with the rise of more relaxed and practical fashions. The emergence of the women's liberation movement in the 1960s and 1970s further challenged the traditional ideals of beauty and femininity, leading to a decline in the popularity of corsets as everyday attire. Today, corsets are no longer considered essential undergarments, but are still seen in recent fashion designs all over the world. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.